Hello everybody, it's George from Ireland, so welcome back to my channel. I'm just commenting on some rather shocking news that, that uh, Sir Jeff Donaldson has uh, stepped down as leader of the Democratic Unionist Party, and that's because he is facing a rape charge. Wow. So I never saw that one coming. That's coming out of a clear blue sky. So uh, Sir Jeffrey, who's um, one of the more credible politicians in Northern Ireland and has been charged of that party for three years. Um, so this is temporary. You know, Gavin Robinson has stepped up to be leader for the time being. But um, so should should Sir Jeff be acquitted, then he will, can resume that mantle. He's been suspended from the party and he's also been suspended from the Orange Order of which he's also a member. So this is something which is historic as it's going back decades. So he was someone who um, appeared to have a very orderly private life. Um, he's a church going Christian. He likes to emphasize he's a family values man. He's very conventional because, you know, Northern Ireland um, attitude and he was obviously a generation or two behind uh, Great Britain, particularly the metropolitan areas. And uh, the DUP, they tend to be quite Victorian until quite recent times that, you know, you should get married. You should have like two or three children and divorce, whilst not the end of the world, is very much not to be encouraged. Homosexuality was something that they didn't approve of, didn't call for it to be criminalized and so on. Having children out of wedlock, they might have tut tutted at that uh, and so on. And they were decidedly straight laced. Um so obviously uh, anyone, even if you're very free spirited, any decent person would say um, rape is, a, is an abhorrent thing, um, but uh, would have thought, be thought to be the least likely person to be um, accused of this. But we can see, um, obviously I'm not, you know, saying that it couldn't be true or anything like that. I have no idea the particulars of who he allegedly did this to and when and so forth. Um, but uh uh, anyway, so he's been charged with that crime and he will stand trial. He was indeed arrested yesterday by the police service of, of, of Northern Ireland and um, the a woman was allegedly his accomplice. So um, what a shocker. So um, he's been in politics for decades. He's sort of the longest serving politician in Northern Ireland. And he comes from a Protestant family in Kilkeel, a fishing village in County Down. I've been there, in fact. He's the eldest of eight children. So he grew up in a family with rather little money. And they were straight down the li line unionists. He left school. He did not pursue higher education. And he was in, was he in the IUC Reserve? Or was it the Ulster Defence Regiment? The IUC Royal Ulster Constabulary, that was the police in Northern Ireland. People were full-time officers. Then there were reservists who did their normal job as a farmer or a postman or a shop assistant or whatever, and would do one or two days a week or whatever in the IUC. Um, and he uh, said he also joined um, the Orange Order at the same time. The Orange Order being an organisation which, which Protestants would join is specifically to promote Protestantism and loyalty to the British monarchy. But by that, that meant with being part of the United Kingdom. Um, and they said they were only loyal to the House of Windsor so long as it will remain Protestant. Were the Windsors to convert to Catholicism or Orthodox Christianity, for instance, then that would be the end of their allegiance to them. Um, so, yeah, uh, so he served valorously in the IUC, which I know the IUC was abominated by some people in Northern Ireland. And um, uh, it's possible that uh, he... he face the, the possibility of being killed because terrorists, the Irish National Liberation Army, the Irish Republican Army, they were, they were killing um, police officers whenever they could, on duty, off duty, armed, unarmed, and so on. And even if they retired, they might still be bumped off. So he was willing to take that risk to serve the public. Um, anyway, uh, he was also the election agent for, for Enoch Pohl. John Enoch Pohl was one of the most contentious British politicians of the late 20th century, Conservative MP for for um, Wolverhampton Southwest, and uh, in the later left the Conservative Party and enjoyed the LC Unionist Party. He wasn't from Northern Ireland; he's from Birmingham, and uh, he but he represented um, South Down that constituency for a while as an LC Unionist. But he was he was um, a bogeyman for the left in the United Kingdom, uh, partly because of his um, uh, appalling racialist screeds against uh, immigration. So um, eventually, um, uh, well, well. Donaldson, who was elected to this toothless Northern Ireland um, Assembly in the 1980s, that folded very quickly. At 23, his youngest ever member of it. And then later, he was elected a member of the Legislative Assembly. He was in the Ulster Unionist Party, but he split with them because he opposed the Good Friday Agreement. But he didn't actually leave the Ulster Unionist Party for several years. And he finally took the next logical step and he joined the Democratic Unionist Party. He'd been a thorn in the side of David Trimble, who just died last year. Trimble, Lord 
for Trimble as he ended up, was the very uh, brave Ulster Unionist leader who did sign the Good Friday Agreement and took an awful lot of flack from his supporters, lost at least a third of his, his voters. But, but Donaldson then ended up accepting and implementing the very agreement that he'd railed against so much. Um, so uh, now he's... Um, uh, so, so Jeffrey Donaldson, even though he led the DUP, he didn't become First Minister of Northern Ireland. And the DUP's deputy first minister is that lady Emma Little Pengelly. Is her and Michelle O'Neill a female dumvirate? Or shall I say, I don't know, dum Um uh, Okay, so we shall see what the outcome of this is going to be. Of course, there could be complete exoneration, vindication, and he could take up this mantle again. But, you know, they say that mud sticks, even were he to be acquitted, there might be a question mark over his reputation. He's been, in, in you know, in politics for a very long time. He's in his early 60s. And so he's quite young. He was elected to Parliament in 1997 and subsequently the Northern Ireland Assembly. He had the double mandate. It was quite possible you were allowed to be in the House of Commons and in the Northern Ireland Assembly at the same time and draw the two for salary for the two. For, and there were people like John Hume who did the, the triple who was elected to the European Parliament and the House of Commons and the Northern Ireland Assembly. What a fat salary he got. Got the late Reverend Ian Paisley likewise. So what else about um, uh, Donaldson? Um, anyway, so uh, so they sent shockwaves through the Northern Ireland politics. And uh, yeah, I mean, he always came across as faintly dim. There was something about his tone of voice, something missing there, sort of unanalytical, a bit childlike. Uh, in his manner of speaking, but he, he'd been there in politics so long, that's why he finally got the top job. They briefly um, elected a, a complete nincompoop called Edwin Poots, whom the parliamentary party couldn't work with, with and who was booted out after about a month. So that there is Donaldson, who's at least a bit more polished and seasoned than, than some of the uh, the backwoodsmen. But yeah, we shall see. Is the party, whether, whether Donaldson comes um, out of this trial, smelling of roses or not, the party may well be losing moving leadership onto a new generation. And they suppose they need new ideas. They need outreach because their their voter base is almost exclusively Protestant. The Alliance Party, the Ulster Unis Party, they have a significant number of Catholics voting for them, but the, the DP very few. Remember, it was founded in 1970 by the Reverend Pais, Ian Paisley. He said he was definitely anti-Catholicism, but not anti-Catholic. And obviously, people my age and older haven't completely forgotten that. So if you're a Catholic, even if you want to belong to the United Kingdom, you might find it difficult to bring yourself to vote um, for the DUP. And, you know, they are associated with a sort of moribund organization, the Orange Order, the other the other loyal orders, which have got very young, few young people joining them. Uh, yeah, so um, goodness. Um, anyway, we shall see what the outcome is, this is going to be. What do you think of, of um, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson? He was knighted a few years ago, the first leader of the DUP, to be awarded a knighthood um, by her late Britannic Majesty. So thank you so much for my channel. Make sure you subscribe on Patreon and donate on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Bye-bye.